Hello and welcome back. My name is Adam Gordon, an entertainer here at IT Pro TV, and I'm your host for the Tips for Microsoft Teams series. Our second episode is going to be focusing on what is a channel. Join me here, if you will. We can take a look at the fact that we're still in the Microsoft Teams app, and we're actually still in the Teams area. If you've seen the last episode in our playlist, you would have seen me talking to you about what a team is. We're going to stay in that same area to talk about channels because channels are one of the elements that we can put into that team and actually add so that we can then communicate and effectively collaborate with members of our team. And so as we look at the Atom team that I've highlighted just over here in our little pick list, you'll see I've opened it up using our carrot. And right down below, I have two items that are listed, general and start here. And I've actually clicked on general and you could see that the general item is represented in the details pane off to the right. And if I click on start here, you'll see it changes. These are my channels, and I can stack up channels inside of a team as one of the elements, one of the objects that I could put into my team's container so that users can use them. And if you think of channels much like watching TV or watching cable or looking at a streaming service, like IT Pro TV, for instance, where you have different channels that you can tune into to see different kinds of content. And you may tune into our Microsoft channel and see all the content in our library that has to do with Microsoft. You may be watching us on YouTube and watching this as part of our playlist. And each of our episodes is all about a common theme, how to use Microsoft Teams more effectively. And so our team is gonna have channels associated with it. And each channel can be geared towards specific communications, specific information, specific ways in which we want members of our team to collaborate. Now, the question is twofold in my mind, hopefully in your mind as well. Number one, now that we know what a channel is, what can we do with it? So I'm going to show you a couple of things we can do with it. But equally importantly, if I want to create a channel inside of a team, can I do that? And if so, where do I go to do it? So let's start by creating a channel, and then we'll take a look at what we can do with them. So let's say that we have our team, like the Adam team here, and maybe you wanna go in and create yourself a channel in the team. If you come over here to the right-hand side of the team, you'll see there's these three dots in a row. We call that an ellipsis. And when I hover over it, it says more options. So let's click there, and I'm just gonna scroll down so we can see the entire little fly-out list of shortcut elements that shows up. And among the many things that are here, you'll see the third item down says Add Channel. And so if I click on Add Channel, and let's just scroll up and over so we can keep this on the screen while we do this. Notice right now I have two channels, General and Start Here. Let's give this a name. Let's call this our Courtney Channel Channel. So we'll call it Courtney Channel. You might put a description in here. This channel is meant to help all the Courtney's communicate, because there's a whole bunch of them running around and they all need to know how to communicate, right? And then we can specify what kind of privacy do we want to associate with our channel? Do we want it to be standard, accessible to everybody in the team, not just the Courtney's, or do we want to make it private, accessible only to a specific group of people within the team, essentially subdividing it and maybe only making it available to people named Courtney, for instance. So I could do that just by selecting. And then I can click Next. We're adding the channel. I'm just going to zoom out so you could see that while it's happening. And then we can go ahead and we're invited, if we choose to, to add members to the Courtney channel channel, because maybe we want to subdivide that into a smaller group of people than the entire membership of the team. So let's zoom in and just see how we do that really quickly. We start by typing a name. Let's go ahead and start typing Cherokee. Nobody called Cherokee in the team. Let's type IT Pro TV4. Don't seem to find anybody like that either. And we would obviously type people and their names until we find somebody. So if I don't see any members right now, maybe this team just doesn't have any members for the moment, then we can skip that. I just opted out by hitting escape and we don't have to worry about adding members. We can always go back and do that later. But you'll see now that our Courtney channel is there and has a little icon next to it. 
And that icon looks almost like either a bag or a purse or maybe a, a padlock, which is what it's supposed to represent. Uh, and that indicates it's a private channel, which is what we decided we wanted. And the two other channels here don't have that padlock. Those indicate they're public channels available to anybody. And so when I click on any one of the channels, I am presented with the details area of our channel. I see the elements up here that are added. We call those tabs, and we'll be identifying and defining what those are in an upcoming episode. I have a little getting started area that invites me to have a conversation. And as you saw, if you watched our introductory episode in the series about what a team is, you saw me create a message and send it to somebody down here at the bottom by using this area. And so channels allow us to be able to create conversation spaces that may be private, membership only, or maybe public to anybody in the team and allow us to then collaborate and communicate. Now let's go look at a team that does have some members. So let's go to another team right here. This team, as I showed you before, does clearly have members associated with it. And so if I want to go ahead and create a channel in this team, let's add a channel like we just did. Let's call this our test two channel. And let's make it private and accessible only to members that are added. And we then choose to go ahead and to start typing the name of somebody who is a member in the team, we see that we can indeed add them with no trouble. And so let's go ahead and add Cherokee Jones. We'll click Add. Cherokee has now been added right there. And when we click Done, we now have our channel, Test 2. And we can see when we come up and we start to interact, that when I click to send a message, that because I've limited membership only to Cherokee Jones, Cherokee shows up and we can type a message. And send it. And if I go to the general channel and I decide to do the same thing, type to look for members, you'll notice while Cherokee is there, you'll notice that I also have a lot of other members that are not part of the channel that I secured and only made available to Cherokee. And when I type a message in one channel, because the other channel is private, those messages don't show up and move back and forth. So private channels are a great way for you to be able to create a little subdivided area within the team that allows you to interact with, collaborate with, communicate with, a, so, a small certain subset of individuals, maybe a, a group of people you're going to start a project with. You want to have that project resonant in the team overall, but only open to the people that are members of that project. You can create a channel and make it a private channel and invite them. And now you've got your own dedicated collaboration space. I will be back with more tips on how to use Microsoft Teams effectively for you throughout our Tips for Microsoft Teams series. But until then, happy teaming. Check out the playlist for more Microsoft Teams tips and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Adam Gordon, and thanks for watching.